Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. First off, I hope everybody out there is healthy and safe and doing well during these incredibly difficult times. I'm not gonna dwell on it because I think we get enough of it in the media right now that we don't need to be beaten over the head with it in what's gonna be hopefully a fun and informative tarantula video. So again, just hope everybody's doing okay. For this one, we're gonna do some do-it-yourself type stuff. For the first one, I've had a lot of people ask me over the years how to keep or house avicularia slings because avicularia, unlike some of the other arboreal slings on the market always want to go up even when little teeny tiny babies. And that can make it difficult when you house them in something that opens from the top like a deli cup because they end up making their little home with some webbing right up along that crease in the top. So every time you open it up, you disturb them. So I came up with something a couple years ago with 32 ounce deli cups. And then now that I've got some new ones from a buddy of mine, Andrew, who gave me six of them. Andrew, if you're watching this, thank you so much, but I truly appreciate it. These guys are gorgeous. I'm gonna show you how I house them and how I created the enclosures for them. Also, I've received a lot of questions on dirt and substrate lately. So for the second part of this video, I will show you the new batch of substrate I'm mixing up and kind of playing with it. I'm going to be honest. I've been home for the last three weeks. I'm pretty bored. So between playing with the spiders, rehousings and stuff like that, I've been trying to do some other things like play with mixing substrates again. I haven't done this in a long time. So I'm going to show you what I mixed up and then you can figure out what works for you. So enough of me talking. Well, okay. Somebody corrected me on the fact that I say enough of me talking that I talk for the rest of the video. Enough of me talking talking on screen of me talking we're going to move on to the rest of the video all right so my buddy andrew was just amazing enough to give me six i don't know if you can see them right in here i believe their second instar avicularia avicularia um, m6 morph six the ones that used to be i believe metallica and obviously this is not the correct container for it he had them in these temporarily so we have to get them out into something more suitable. So what I have here is an enclosure that I've been kind of playing around with. I used these a while ago when I had a little avicularia sling and it worked great. The issue with avicularia is they want to go right to the top of whatever enclosure you put them in. So if you put them in a regular, what we have here are the snack cups, get these at Walmart, the five, point, uh, five ounce ones. A lot of times these make for nice little arboreal enclosures, but they'll come up and they'll sit right up here in the corner where the cap meets the lid, which makes it difficult because if they web up, every time you open up to feed them, they either bolt out or it rips up their web. So what we did here, something a little bit different, you'll see it's upside down. And what we have is two cups. One of them is the bottom cup that we cut the top off. I'll show how to do that in a moment. Fill that with substrate. Then we have the top cup, which we post, poked all the holes in, put a piece of fake foliage up in the top there. And what I'm gonna do is shove a little piece of sphagnum up here as well. So what will happen is they will come and live right up in here. So what we did here to make it really easy, just take a sharp knife, poke a starter hole in this to get it going. And then what we're gonna do is just cut this out. And you can make a rough cut first until you see where you want it to go. So what we're left here is just the bottom. And then what I'm gonna do is go around real quick, clean that up a little bit. Make sure you don't leave any of the pieces around for your dogs to chew. There we go. And that piece right there is where we're gonna put the substrate in. Then you take another one and you basically just slide it right over the top of it. So the trick is, and I know somebody's going to point this out and go, what happens if it gets caught? You obviously want to make sure when you put the top on that the spider's up here. And what you'll find is they will be up there and then just carefully slide this on. Just remember when you remove it from the shelf that the bottom is not attached because I've already dropped one and dropped the bottom off. <clears throat> now to put the holes in, very easy. We have an old safety pin here that we use. I believe we use these for the Papalopus species Columbia large and just put a bunch of holes. And remember with the vicule area, the more holes, the better. We want good cross ventilation, good ventilation overall, because we don't want these to get too stuffy. So put a lot of, I was, I've been putting three rows of holes in each one. I did not put any down here, but you can put them all the way down if you want, but you want to make sure there's good airflow. And then as far as putting in or mounting in the piece of fake foliage. I'm gonna have the video here that we shot earlier. Basically, all we did is take one of those little ventilation holes and I'm gonna take the tip of the knife. Now you could obviously do this with a pin. If you heat it up on the stove, you could use a pin in it. But what I wanted was a really tight hole that would kind of grip it. Because in case you don't have the hot glue, which is the step I do next, you can just easily shove the thing right into the hole. It holds it in place. And now you give it a little spot for it to kind of roost and create its burrow with webbing up top, which will work great. And then what we did afterwards is we went through and put a little, just a little dollop of hot glue right on the end to make sure that it's held in place. 
And then what we end up with is this little arrangement right in here. You can see the little dollop of glue there. This thing's held in place great. What we want is the spider is going to go up there, do its roosting. I've already done two of them. I cheated and do two, did two already, but they're already up here. But they're going right up to the top. So every time I want to feed them, I just pop this open, put this back down, and we're perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do is get one of these little guys out right now. <clears throat> this is exactly what we're talking about. If you notice exactly where it is, right up near the top. Oh, the other thing I was doing, I forgot. To add a little extra space for it to go, I've been taking a little piece of asphagnum moss and just shoving it in behind here. You could also spray that down if you wanted to. This will give it something if it wants to web, gives it a little more place to hide up in there. Because again, they're going to go up, and this would not, I would not use this for probably Salmopia species, for Tapinokinius, for Pisolotheria, any of the ones that burrow as slings, this would not work for because you're going to want, they're basically going to burrow down into here anyway. They don't become arboreal until they put on some size. But the avicularias, right off the bat, they're up in the trees, they're up above the ground. So this is a good little one for them. So let's get this little guy out of here. See if we can't get it in without any trouble. It's just going to skirt all the way around, right? Nope. It's adorable. I don't know if you can see that. Oh. That's what happens when I touch the foam over these doing it. There it is. Adorable little spider. And what I got here for substrate, it's not overly moist. I just moistened a little bit of it. And what I can do is spray in here. This is also large enough that I might be able to, I'm looking for something a little smaller to put in there for a water dish for it. Or I might go ahead and glue something on the side for it. You could easily glue a little bottle cap or something on the side for it to come down and drink. There we go. And my buddy Ryan actually showed me that one. We had a bunch set up, I believe, with the Vicularia. No, Carabina Versicolors and had them all set up with the little water dish on the side, which is great. So there we go. So then we just go ahead and carefully... Drop this right on here, and now we can go up where it wants to go, and we can go ahead and easily open this up for maintenance and not have to worry about them shooting out. So hopefully that helps a couple people. I played with this one a while ago. It worked great. I actually used a different size deli cup, but we had these, and I was playing with them the other day, and it seems to be working really well. So there we go. A little trick to keep these guys so that they can go up and about, and you don't have to worry about them scurrying out or tearing their webs all apart every time you open it up. All right, now that I've been home bored and not a lot to do during the course of the day, what I've been doing is going back to mixing some substrates. And I've had a lot of people go on my older videos and ask what I used to mix up. And I honestly haven't been doing it for a while because I've been buying the BioDude substrate, which I absolutely love. I use it for the bioactive enclosures. I use it for the non-bioactive enclosures. However, I decided I wanted to get back to actually mixing up some dirt myself. So what we have here is everything I purchased to mix up what I'm going to make my special mixture going ahead. Again, you don't have to use all this stuff. Every single one of these things, whether it be cocoa fiber or cocoa core, coir, core, I never know how to spell it, topsoil or peat, they can all work by themselves independently. It, a lot of people use just straight topsoil, cocoa fiber or peat with no problems. I like to mix them up though to get the properties I want. Plus I want something that's a little more I don't know, naturalistic looking going ahead. So what we've got here is all the ingredients. I've got the peat moss. These you buy in the bales. I believe they're uh, 85, what, what is it? It's, it's several cubic yards. The stuff really fluffs up. Then we have topsoil over here, Scott's brand. I will never use Agway again because that was the stuff that was poisoned. We actually have a ba bag of it in the back still that I got to get tested someday to find out what was in it and killed all my spiders. Charcoal, horticultural charcoal. High grade desert play sand, the white sand. Sphagnum moss, I like the New Zealand sphagnum moss myself. I actually have a huge bale coming, but because of the obvious issues with Amazon not shipping stuff out unless it's really important, which is good, it's gonna be a while till it comes here, but luckily I have a couple bags of this. And then the cocoa fiber is this stuff right over here. This stuff is a great deal. I buy the Kempf cocoa fiber, I get it off Amazon. I buy it when it's about 15 bucks for a 10 pound brick. And when it's rehydrated, it makes 17 gallons. This is already, I've already used a bunch of this stuff in other enclosures. So that makes actually a lot more than that. So instead of buying the little bricks you get from Zoom Ed where they charge you twice as much for them and sometimes three times as much, one of these big bricks will do you good. You do have to rehydrate it with water. So that's something to remember. But what I do is basically take the brick, put it in the tub, pour water over it and scrape off the stuff as it enlarges. So what we're gonna do here, my, I was gonna wear gloves, but I forgot, hold on, I'm gonna grab gloves. 
All right, so we actually cut there so I can get gloves on. Unfortunately, can't get gloves anymore, so I'm reusing these, and I just realized I dumped water in them yesterday when I was cleaning up something, and they feel absolutely disgusting, and it's going to drive me nuts. So let's go on. What we're going to do here, I've been basically doing starting with one part cocoa fiber, one part peat. So I have my 32-ounce standard deli cup. We'll do four of those to start off. Two, three... I feel like I'm on Sesame Street here. Four. Oh. Then what we're gonna do, yeah. No, this. Uh, uh, uh. Then we're gonna go over to the uh, peat. Now, the, my biggest issue with peat is it can be so dusty. So you'll see when I'm dumping this in, I'm gonna try to be a little more careful. And it's gonna billow all up, and I'm gonna have to go into the new one here. One. I probably could moisten it ahead of time, but two. Oh, that went right on my sleeve. I think it was the wind. Three. Let's take one out of this new one here. Oh, yeah, it's nice. Four. Now, if you want to keep the dust down a bit, pour some water in here. Stop being so dusty. Whee! Now, what I've been doing, as far as the sand, is I've been doing about 16 ounces of sand. Now, a lot of people like to mix sand because it does allow the water to filter in a little bit better, supposedly. And again, a lot of it, when you're mixing your own substrate, you want something that not only holds on to moisture well, but you also want something that will allow the moisture to be re-added. So what will happen is if you use, say, straight topsoil, my biggest issue with it is once it dries out, trying to add water to it again, it doesn't absorb in, it doesn't sink in very well, and you end up with a big muddy mess. So we did about 16 ounces, we'll do a little bit more. And again, I was telling Billy before we started filming this, people are gonna want actual like measurements. I've been kind of playing this one by ear. Charcoal. I didn't usually, people used to email me, ask me about adding charcoal to stuff, and I wasn't sure about it, but after talking to a lot of people, it's good for absorbing impurities and keeping smells down. My neighbors are probably wondering what I'm doing out here. Oh, oh yeah, big pumps. Now, if doing, mixing this for smaller species, especially slings, I wouldn't bother adding the big pieces of charcoal because it's just going to be something that's going to be a mess and hard to get into those little sling enclosures. And then what I've been doing, my secret ingredient, why are people driving up here and going into our mailboxes? Weird. <laughs> they, Some, the <laughs> yeah, they literally just went, that, that looked really shady. What we're going to do here is add some topsoil, because I just love the properties of the topsoil, plus there's a little organic stuff in there, so if you're planting, this stuff's a little bit better. So we're gonna do two scoops of that. And then, last but not least, sphagnum moss. So what I'm gonna do here, switch hands, because these are not left-handed scissors, is snip some of this stuff off, and we're gonna mix this up into it. And for all the people that said they like to add sphagnum to their mixes instead of vermiculite, and I've gotten that over a couple times over the years, thank you so much for the suggestion because I'm finding I like it too. I do like vermiculite, and I did on the other mix I did, I did add some vermiculite, but I'm going to try to keep this one like all organic and natural. So, now we have the sphagnum in there. I'm going to add a little bit more water as soon as I find my... And then what we're using here is a Ziploc. I think these are 10 gallon bags. I like them for, is it 10 gallon? We'll call it 10 gallon, I don't know what it is. There it is, stand and fill. These are awesome for holding substrate, especially if you're keeping it in your garage but you want to keep some in your house so that you have it on hand. And what we're gonna do is mix this stuff all up. And if it's too dusty, close it down. What we end up with, Billy wants to get nice and close, we'll get this, is it nice and... Love the mix. I like the fibrous content of the cocoa fiber. I really like what that adds to it. Got some sand, you can see the sand in there. Charcoal, and then these help, little pieces of sphagnum moss, help to hold, maintain moisture, and it makes it easier when you're re-adding moisture to it. 
So I've gone ahead and what I will do is get some footage of the enclosure I just used this in because what I've been doing lately also is using leaf litter, which I just love to look at. It. Even if I'm not doing a bioactive enclosure, I like to look at the leaf, leaf litter. So I will show off some of the enclosures I did with these in it with the leaf litter. And it really does have a really nice look to it. But that's it. And what we're going to do going ahead is I am going to try to hook Roan up. My son, 17 year old, who years ago we did an experiment with the different types of substrate, how long they'd hold moisture, and we're gonna to try to do something like that again because I can't find, we used to have all these notes of the stuff we did, and I can't find it anywhere. So I will revisit that again, and I will keep up, people updated if I bother to change my formula. Now, again, I encourage everybody, mixing substrate is one of the fun parts of the hobby. You don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. Feel free to mix it, to create your own mixes, figure out what works for you, and experiment with it. That's part of the fun of it as far as I'm concerned, especially if you're trapped at home and kind of going crazy. So there it is, that's the mix. Now all this stuff together, it was 10, two bags of these were three. This is an older bag, we're not gonna count that. The sand was seven. This was probably the most expensive thing because I bought it off Amazon and paid up the wazoo for it. Almost slipped there. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that was a little, that was, I think, seven bucks. And then the cocoa fiber was 15. So you're talking about, we'll just round it up, 50 bucks. You'll have all the stuff you need to mix this. Plenty of substrate for fossorials if you're doing fossorials. I mean, you can see what's still left over in there. This would be enough for a fossorial thing. There's still a huge bale of that left. You can make so much and get so much for your money, especially if you're cheap like me. So that leaves more money for spiders. So that'll do it for this one. Hopefully this helps some people out. Feel free to let me know if you try it. Feel free if you have different mixes to let me know what your mixes are. Again, this is what works for me. Might not be what works for you. All right, so hopefully some people will find those helpful. Again, you don't have to do this. I, I've been bored and I've been playing around with stuff, so I've been having a lot of fun with kind of experimenting with things. So if you've got a system that works for you, use it. I'm not telling you how to do things. You don't have to do it the Tom Moran way. My way is just one way. For the substrate, I'm sure people are gonna go out there and try to copy exactly what I did, but if you can't find all the ingredients or there are things you're like, hey, I really don't wanna put pieces of charcoal in there, don't. Experiment, figure out what works for you. A lot of different combinations of both soil, cocoa fiber and peat will work great. You can do one, you can do two, you can do three. You see what I did there. I just kind of threw everything together. You can add sand, you can add clay. There's so many things you can do. So feel free to experiment. Use this as a springboard to kind of do your own experiments, figure out what works for you and stay sane while you're locked inside your house. So that will do it for this one. As always, if you like the video enough that you'd like to subscribe, very much appreciate you click the little circle right up in there. If you want to check out some more videos ahead of time, see if I'm really worth subscribing to, I don't blame you. You can find them over there. I answer all comments. It may take me a couple days because I tend to get a lot of them, but I will get around to them. That'll do it for this time. Stay safe, guys. We'll catch you next time.